So you bought yourself a blowtorch because you want to do a little bit of soldering in copper pipe in the world of plumbing so you can impress the missus? Well, there's six mistakes that everyone makes when they're doing this. <laughs> Don't make them yourself. Let's find out what they are and how we can get around them. Hold tight! So we've got a piece of pipe here. Does it really look clean to you? Does it? If it does, then you've already about made your first mistake. Just like I can't speak English anymore. <laughs> but So look, this pipe is not clean. That is the first mistake that loads of people make. They try to solder onto a piece of pipe that isn't clean. Sometimes it works. Sometimes I can get this on here like now, grab myself a fit in. Look, nothing's clean. Like I, I, Straight away, I just hate that. I could put some heat on there. It might run, it might not. If it doesn't work properly, water damages houses and properties quite a bit. It's a bit like fire, isn't it? The only thing that stops fire is water. I don't know what that's got to do with this video, but it's still something you should think about. So look, make sure you clean the pipe. There's a couple of ways that we can do that. Usually you use a thing called emery cloth that you can buy in our Amazon store, or you can use wire wool. You get on the end of the pipe like so, and you can give that a little bit of a clean up. Oh, look. Look how clean that is. The reason we need to clean that is because solder needs perfectly clean contacted copper to go onto so it can get into that copper and get into the fitting as well to make a watertight seal. We could just start soldering now, couldn't we? We could get that on there and start soldering it, couldn't we? No, we can't, can we? Because there's problem number two that people like you make all the time. Well, not people like you, because you're actually figuring out how to not make these mistakes. The next one is people do not flux the fitting. Mental. We need this to be even cleaner. And the way we do that, we use acid flux. Believe me, don't get flux in your eye. I got it in my eye once. My apprentice laughed because I jumped up so quick. I was like, Argh! like that. And he started going, <laughs> like laughing. Honestly, I was not happy with him. I was like, mate, I'm, I'm in pain, you know? I thought we were friends. Just get some flux on there like so. Do not get flux on the inside of the pipe because flux is an acid and it can stay in the pipe and over years can burn through it and cause a pinhole. But when we do our flaming on here, we heat it up so much it burns off and it isn't there after we've done the soldering. The other thing as well, don't, I mean, some people would say put flux on the inside of the fitting. Don't really think that's a great idea. What you want to do is just pop it on like so and twist it around a bit and then you know that the flux is all over. Another little sort of mini mistake some people make is they'll put the flux on and they'll go away for like a day and then come back and expect to solder it, by which time the flux has kind of gone crusty and it just doesn't work as well, all right? So that's number two. Are we ready to do any soldering now? No, we're not! <laughs> Sorry, I keep shouting. I do get a bit shouty when I'm talking about soldering. It's the thing that's close to me art. The other thing that people don't do is they might pick up a fitting that's been in their box for a while. This is actually a very nice brand new kind of fitting, but they don't clean the inside of the fitting. That's the one thing I would say you should do if you're using old stuff. Get inside that fitting and give it a bit of a clean, okay? Try and do the same to the inside of the fitting as we did on the outside here, but don't put flux in it. Now, are we finally ready to do a little bit of soldering? I think you find that we are. I'm sure you're all happy. I'm not gonna have a go at you anymore. Imagine that, you're sat there watching YouTube being made to feel small and insignificant, like my wife does to me. Anyway, let's get soldering. Oh, by the way, I've got a small tip on here. Now, the good thing about this tip, it doesn't get hot. So when you, when you pop your blowtorch down and it falls over, it doesn't burn a hole through someone's carpet which has never happened to me ever. But one thing you can do with it is you can turn it up too high. So we can put it on here and we get that fitting going. Look at it, it's just all insane. Like everything's too much. We're heating the fitting up nicely at the moment. But now I would say that's getting to a point where it's too hot. The fitting is getting too warm and we're putting too much heat on it. And you can see the fitting is actually going blue. When it's gone like a kind of bluey color like that, what you've done is you've fatally weakened the metal of the fitting and the pipe. You've structurally changed it, it's got too hot, and over time it could leak. You don't want to go into doing a solder with this flat out, it's just gonna go completely crazy. And I think you can see like the way that we were there like that, it's all a bit mad, we're too close. 
But I soldered like that when I was started out as an apprentice. And I, as much as I try to make this video amusing, we do all start out not knowing what we're doing. We're not born with the knowledge of everything, are we? And the only way to learn is to see other people do it and also to make your own mistakes and not say the word paypal properly. Paypal, paypal, paypal. So look, I'm gonna take this off. I mean, that is roasting hot. Look at it in there. I mean, that would probably solder, but that's far too much heat on that, okay? This is mistake number five. It's too little heat, obviously. Now I'll show you what that looks like. So we've got that on. And you're scared of your blowtorch because you've never used it before. It's still running now. And you're like that. Hopefully you're not on a price because you're going to be here for days. <laughs> Especially if this is a bigger size pipe. If it's like 22 mil or 28 mil. If you're using this at this kind of speed or well, heat output, yeah, it's not going to do anything. You're going to be here for donkeys. Nice and quiet though. Let's get this one done so it's actually ready for us to use. So you can see this from the top, okay? Give that a good old clean up. We're going to get our fit in. Oh look, we're going to run around in our fit in a bit. Get that nice and clean as well. Bit of flux on here. And then do what we did a minute ago. Run that around. If you want a really clean joint, a little, nice little tip. Wipe off any of the excess flux around the fitting before you do any soldering. There are kind of like two issues, two mistakes that you can make in one here. And it's how much solder you put into the fitting when you're doing your job. So we've got this fitting here. Let's light this beast up and we're going to get this to the actual temperature that I'd normally do a 15 mil thing at. So we're going to get that down. That there, oh, probably a little bit too heavy. That's probably about right for 15 mil. Like that sort of noise. Hear that? Don't burn my nose hairs. And we're going to heat it up. Usually I start on the underside because I like my solder to run to the underside. But we're going to whip round and then we come round here, give that a little bit, yeah. And then we get our solder and we just go like that. Oh, lovely, done. I ain't done. That's not enough solder. I would say if you're going to do a 15 mil fitting and you're just starting out to do this, it might be a good idea that you run your solder out and if you want, get yourself a pen and every five mil, just mark on your solder every five mil and that for now would be roughly what i'd put in to a 15 mil fitting okay as a newbie when you get more experienced at this you will actually probably use a little bit less because you don't want to have loads coming out the other mistake people make is they whack loads of solder in and you end up with what we call pigeon poo on the bottom of the thing and it just looks horrible really it's not very nice however if it's in a floorboard put as much solder in as you are happy to do. Just have a look around the back of this fitting here. You'll now know what I mean. So from here, it looks kind of like a nice little fitting, doesn't it? But if we go around here, there's no solder around this side of the fitting. That would definitely leak, okay? So if we just reheat this again, sometimes it's what I like about these little tools here. You can just pop a little bit of solder around, a little bit of flux, light this up. So why I like to heat from the bottom as well is that I can then put my solder in at the top, it will run to the bottom and I know it's got around the whole fitting. So look, that's run at the top there. And then, just like that. Doesn't look amazing, but we're not at home to Mr. Cock Up, right? And also, you've just started out. You can't expect Instagram soldering. And let's face it, all the guys that show their soldering on Instagram, whilst their work looks absolutely beautiful, and I applaud you for how good it is, that's not the reality, believe me, especially under the floorboards. This is just for like an extra tip, give your pipe a brasso. Look at it, so, so hot still, it's burning the brasso off, and then polish it. This is what I do if I'm bringing like pipe work up to radiators and stuff, and that'll stay nice and bright forever. Old school plumber, plumber parts fans will know that I have brasso in my soldering bag at all times. Get this on the uh, Amazon store. Also, I found out, Max, that un abrazo, I believe, is to hug in Spanish. My uh, Spanish teacher said that to me. He keeps saying un abrazo. I was like, what's that mean, mate? Right, so the last one, okay, and this one, yeah, is a mistake that we all kind of make. I'm gonna use this piece over here for this mistake because we need to get some water in it. This is when people try to solder a pipe with water in it, and it doesn't work, I'm afraid. Right, so there we go, put a bit of water in there. Yeah. Firstly, let's just see what happens to the pipe. Say we've got a fitting in this, and we wanna heat that up and solder it. So, and say there's a drip every so often as well. So you're gonna get in here like this.
and all that's coming out. And what effectively is happening there is the heat, the water is taking the heat away from the fitting and we need a proper amount of heat, the right amount of heat to make sure that we get a lovely solder on there, don't we? If we don't have the right amount of heat, we ain't gonna get the right solder, boy. Few things that you can do, right? If you've got two blow torches, this is an old school trick. So the pipe's coming down here, just imagine now, use your brains and imagine this. You've got the pipe coming down here with water running down it, and you basically, you heat this piece up here to flash it into steam. So then you get yourself a nice little chance to get the solder on in there, get that heated up and get it done properly. The other little trick we use, it's an old school one, I've seen loads of other YouTubers have said about this, but none of them are anywhere near as attractive as I am. Uh, you get a little piece of bread and you chew the bread a little bit, have a bit for yourself if you like, make sure you put that down in my fitness pal. Bread's got calories. Bloats me, Max. And then you pop the bread in the fitting like that and then you've got a few minutes, once you've got the bread in there, you just sort of get it in, push it down with a pencil and that acts as like a nice little watertight bung. But the reason we use bread is because over time it degrades, falls apart and then flows off away from the system. So that is one thing. I mean, we, we could, I could try to demonstrate doing this, but I mean, all that water in there, I've just pulled all over my tools, lovely. That would stop definitely a solder. So if you cut a pipe and there's a drip coming out of it, either find out how to turn the water off to stop that happening. You could try and freeze it if you're an absolute legend and you know how to freeze pipe. If you do, you're probably not here to watch this video anyway. Or you could use the remedial little tricks that I've got there as well to sort that out. Or you could not solder and use a compression fitting instead. In which case, don't make any mistakes on compression fittings because there's quite a few mistakes that people make and that's this video here. Watch that now. It's going to teach you how to not mis make mistakes on compression fittings. <laughs> See you soon. Subscribe. Goodbye. Do one.